Dude, Kingdom Hearts is so good. Until now, I hadn't beaten Kingdom Hearts at all. I tried playing it a couple times when I was younger, but after beating Kingdom Hearts 3, I decided to give it a proper go and finally beat the whole game. Heck man, I was a fool when I was younger. I played Kingdom Hearts 2 first, and going back to Kingdom Hearts 1 was a little difficult when it came to the combat. Kingdom Hearts 2 just had the best mechanics out of the whole series in my opinion. Dope combos, great reaction commands, drive gauges. Kingdom Hearts 1 was a tough sell after experiencing the beautiful combat of Kingdom Hearts 2, so as a kid I never really gave it a fair chance. Now after beating Kingdom Hearts 3 and going back to Kingdom Hearts 1, it's given me a whole new perspective on it. I loved Kingdom Hearts 3, but it truly was a press X to win kind of game. Kingdom Hearts has always been criticized for its quote unquote simple combat, but KH3 took it to a whole new level. Don't get me wrong, it was fun, flashy, and looked great, but it was overcomplicatedly simple. Not sure if that's actually a word or even makes any sense, but to put it short, there was just way too many choices while in combat to output massive damage that took nearly no skill whatsoever to actually accomplish. Basically, you would mash X a bunch and then press triangle and Donald would shoot some rockets and fuck up the whole battlefield. Or you would set off some insane magic spell obliterating all of your opponents. It was extremely simple combat masked by flashy animations to make the player feel like they're doing a whole lot more than they actually are. Kingdom Hearts 1 also has some pretty simple combat, but the simplicity here can make the combat more complex. You can dodge, block, attack, and occasionally use a reaction command with triangle, and then use some simple magic, none of which felt overpowered in any way. I barely even used magic because I saved all my MP bars for the cure spell, because I had a damn hard time with this game, like shit dude. I wasn't expecting the normal difficulty to be this f***ing hard, but it really made me fall in love with this game, especially after KH3's super easy campaign. I really had to watch what my opponent was doing, listen for audible signals for incoming attacks so I could dodge in time and attack only when it was safe to do so. When I was younger, I always thought Kingdom Hearts 1 felt so slow compared to 2, but playing it now, it really isn't. There is nearly no time to just stop and relax, especially in the latter half of the game. It's just constant battling keeping you on your toes. The whole second half of the game is a gauntlet, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but first I wanted to talk a bit about the Disney half of Kingdom Hearts. The Disney worlds fit so seamlessly into this first game, and the reason to be traveling through them is the perfect way to make them fit within the story. Sora, Donald, and Goofy's main goal is to find Kairi, Riku, and King Mickey, so traveling to different worlds just makes perfect sense. Each world also pushes the story a little further, whether it's Riku popping up and being a dick, or learning more about the Heartless. You also never have to spend too much time in any given world, there's just enough to do before you start getting bored and want to move on in the story. They really nailed the Disney integration the first time around. The level design was also spot on, a couple of my favorites being Agrabah and Halloween Town. The worlds are linear enough to keep you on the correct path, but also left enough room for exploration, so you have a bit of a chance to look around and explore the world. Also, you can skip Atlantica and the underwater combat, so that's a huge plus. Great work, Square Enix, 12 out of 10. Okay, so let's talk about the last few hours of the game. Major spoilers here, obviously, so you've been warned. After finishing the Disney worlds, we reach Hollow Bastion, which is the first original world aside from Destiny Islands, Sora's homeworld, and Traverse Town, where you start your adventure. Hollow Bastion almost felt like they shoved a Zelda dungeon into Kingdom Hearts. It's big, there's puzzles, plenty of tough enemies, boss battles, and it brings us one of the best fights in the whole game. Fighting Riku in Hollow Bastion was the most memorable experience I've had playing Kingdom Hearts 1, maybe even playing Kingdom Hearts in general. After searching through all the worlds for Sora's friends with Riku just out of reach, finally confronting him was just the perfect way to reunite the childhood rivals. The fight itself puts everything you've learned to the test and pushes your own limits. I had a damn hard time with this fight. I even got to a point where I set my controller down and I was convinced that I just would not be able to beat him and that I would never finish this game. But I kept at it and finally triumphed. It's just such a perfect moment. So I talked about the last hours of the game being a gauntlet of battles. From Hollow Bastion and beyond, there are 11 entire boss battles to fight through, three of which being the final boss, Ansem, and the last of those three being a giant multi-stage flying battle with Tengen Topa, Grand Ansem, which was both awesome and f***ing stupid at the same time. We'll talk about that soon. The whole last world, the end of the world, was constant fighting until you finally reach the final boss of the game, Ansem, Seeker of Darkness. The first fight you have with him, you battle on the destroyed beaches of Destiny Island with Donald and Goofy at your side. This battle isn't too hard, but it still keeps you on your toes. It does a really good job of making you feel like you've gotten really good at the game. After defeating Ansem on the beach, you get a quick moment to re-equip some items, heal up, and change any abilities you might want swapped around. 
then you follow Ansem, fight a dark side, and then battle Ansem once again, 1v1. This fight is super fun, a perfect apex of all that you've learned so far on your adventure. He's got a guard you can dodge past to get some extra damage in, a giant darkness attack that you have to constantly dodge to get through, he's got a dash move that you can either dodge until it's over or block to stun him for some extra damage, and a super annoying attack where he attaches his heartless guardian dude to you to do extra damage to you while you basically gotta just run for your life. This move made me more mad than anything, but remember how I said I had to learn to react to some audible cues to avoid attacks? Well, yeah, that was one of them. They just did a really good job of bringing back everything you've learned into one final battle. Just like the Riku battle. It really pushed your limits and forced you to improve or die. The really shit part about it was if you lost, you would reload right after the first Ansem battle, so I ended up having to restock my items, swap my abilities every single time I lost, and then I had to fight the dark side again before even attempting Ansem one more time. Super duper annoying, but pretty minor gripe overall. Now, in my opinion, the game could have ended there. I thought that was a great boss battle to end on, but this is Square Enix we're talking about, so of course, Ansem would turn into a giant monster spaceship with multiple stages to fight through. This battle was really cool, but why did it have to be a flying battle? Oh, hey, you know what's great? Underwater mechanics, right? Yeah, people love that shit. Why don't we just use those same mechanics for a flying battle? That's a great idea. I mean, it wouldn't have been that bad, but flying means you can't use your block or dodge, something that you've been using the entire game. So the whole fight just felt like I was attacking as fast as I could and mashing the heal spell to avoid dying. Literally the whole battle felt like this, so it was still cool and fun, but an air dodge or the ability to block still would have made it way better and far less frustrating. I always hate it when they take away mechanics that you've been using the whole time right at the end of a game. But once the whole ordeal is done and Sora and Riku and Kairi finally get to go home to Destiny Islands... HA! <laughs> GOT <laughs> <laughs> what, you thought you'd have a happy ending? No way, man. This game ends with Riku still stuck in the dark world and Kairi going back to Destiny Islands alone. But damn, man, when Sora and Kairi briefly reunite and Simple and Clean starts playing, the whole adventure just came to such a clean close. Our hero setting off on new adventures, Kairi safe waiting back at home. Dude, just such a great finish. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but Simple and Clean perfectly describes Kingdom Hearts. Unfortunately, that's where the simplest ends for the series. As we all know, things just become a huge mess when it comes to the story. A lovable mess, but still a mess. But hey, in 10 years from now, when Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Final Mix Re-Remix Back to the Beginning Ultra 4K HD Edition hits the PS7, we can remember the good old days when things were simple and clean. Also, fuck gummy ships. I'm seriously glad that I didn't force myself to play this game as a kid. I don't think I would have appreciated it as much if I had. If you haven't played Kingdom Hearts 1 yet, I highly recommend giving it a try. If you got this far in the video, let me know in the comments your thoughts on Kingdom Hearts 1. Leave a like or even subscribe to see what I get up to in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.